Hi, Nancy. Habari Gani, Matt. How are you? What was that? <laughs> I'm practicing my Swahili. Very good. Thank you. Did, can I dazzle you with a few more phrases? Please do. Okay. Kula. Do you want uh -huh. to say that after me? Kula. Kula. That's eat. Very yeah. essential. Yes. Maji is water. Maji is water. Another essential. Uh-huh. And cho is toilet. <laughs> another essential. <laughs> so I've, I've got the really important ones. you got the and big three. And Harry is goodbye. <laughs> well, we won't say that until uh, a, a few moments. But you, interview. you are heading off, Nancy, and this trip is just around the corner. And I know this this day has been building for quite some time. How, how are you feeling with this trip just about to happen? This is not a quick jaunt anywhere. You're heading out on quite an adventure here. Well, it's 24 hours of traveling ahead, yes. so I'm thinking about that, and packing has been interesting because we're taking 52 soccer balls that have been donated, so that was a bit of a wow. strategic packing <laughs> initiative. More but, than uh, one carry on there. Done, yeah. So, no, really excited. And how did this trip come about? Well, it actually started with two teachers in Summerside, Tammy Craig and Kara DeCoste, and uh, they traveled to Ecuador twice before this on what they call volunteers, so their students were touring but volunteering as well. But there's also a connection to Kenya. Tammy teaches at Three Oaks in Summerside, and for six years she's been twinned with a school in Kenya. So she had done these volunteers before and thought, hey, I'd like to go and do this in Kenya, meet the teacher that I've been corresponding with mm -hmm. for the six years. Kara said, hey, sounds like a great idea. They approached Farmers Helping Farmers, and the timing was perfect because it's the 35th anniversary of Farmers Helping Farmers. Right. So the idea of a youth tour just tied in perfectly. And what will you be doing in Kenya? Well, connecting to a lot of Farmers Helping Farmers projects, and the big one for this tour is going to be visiting twinned schools. So there are 18 schools in Kenya that are twinned with schools in Canada. And I say Canada, it used to be just schools on PEI, but it has now expanded to include schools in a couple of other places. And we're going to be visiting six of those schools while we are there. So jam-packed itinerary, mm -hmm. but one of the great things is that we will be spending a substantial amount of time at one of these schools. That's Buri secondary school. That's the one that Tammy has been twinned with. And uh, it's a high school, so those students will be closest in age to our students. And, and so that's part of what you're going to be doing, but like you say, it's a very full itinerary. So, so take us through some of the other things you'll be up to there. Yeah, I wanted to mention a couple of other things that we're doing at Bori because it's kind of fun. We're going to spend a day in the classroom with them on Friday. I can't believe that I'm saying Friday. It's just a couple of days from now. Yeah. That's, we're going to be doing it. On Saturday, they're going to put on a games day for us. Uh, not so hopeful how I'm going to do with that one. <laughs> but we do have some track and field athletes and some provincial soccer players, so they can carry the rest of us. And then on Sunday, they're putting on a church service for us. And then there's going to be a village feast that we'll be part of. And so I think we're really going to build relationships with the people at, at Bori, spending that amount of time with them. Feasts and fun and community and sports, but y you're doing some work and while you're there. And then some work. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've got my gardening gloves packed, actually, because uh, the following week, next week, we're going to be building two school gardens. And these are at two of the twin schools through Farmers Helping Farmers. Each of the youth who are taking part in this tour had to raise $500 in project money. And this is one of the projects that they wanted to do. And these gardens are really important because in Kenya, the kids have two of their meals at school. Wow. They have a kind of porridge in the morning called gitiri. I think I'm pronouncing that mm -hmm. right. Oh, my my Swahili obviously is a little bit questionable. <laughs> and then the second meal is a kind of stew, and that usually has corn or maize, as they call it, and beans. But with these school gardens, they can add fresh vegetables. So it makes a really big difference, adds a lot of variety and nutrition. So that is one of the big projects. And they're going to decide when the youth get back. There are other projects that they'll be doing, but they wanted to see first what they want to put their money towards. And so you're visiting an orphanage as well, is that right? Yes, an orphanage. And that will be, I'm sure it'll be quite emotional yeah. for, for the youth. Um, a lot of the students from UPEI who go over, they visit this orphanage and uh, have described it as, as quite an experience. We're also going to go to a dairy that Farmers Helping Farmers has been working with and also uh, some dairy farms. And a dairy farm in Kenya is really different from some of the dairy operations here. Actually, the youth on our tour went and toured some dairy farms in PEI just for the contrast. So hundreds of dairy cows versus one or two. Mm-hmm. 
How many of you are going? How, how big is this group from PEI? It's 10 teenagers from across the island and five adults. And you have a special connection to one of the schools that you will be visiting. So why don't you tell us about the classrooms that, that you have helped to build? And I know you've been working tirelessly with these fundraising campaigns to help to build. Yeah, and I should mention that my 16-year-old son, Tristan, is one of the 10 youth who will be going. Yeah. And uh, one day next week, Thursday next week, we will be visiting the classrooms that we have built. We started out in April of 2014 building one classroom in Kenya in honor of my son, Colum. It was We wanted to do something really tangible, and so the idea of a classroom, before we built this classroom, the students would have been in wooden buildings, the rain would come in through the water walls, there were dirt floors, and now with the new classrooms we've built, they have walls, they have windows, they have doors, like they're amazed by windows and doors, something Mm -hmm. that we totally take for granted. So we started off doing our fundraising, and we had a bingo, we had a lemonade stand, a fitness fundraiser, and you came and visited me last fall in the field of sunflowers at Woods Farms, and we sold those sunflowers. So all together, when we visit Kamuketha, is the school's name, we've built not one, but three classrooms. Congratulations. (laughs) So it's been amazing. And I say we have built because there have been so many people who have been involved with this over the year, like hundreds and hundreds from buying sunflowers to the bingo. It's been really amazing and really heartwarming for me and for Tristan. And what will it mean for you to be able to see those classrooms in person? What do you think that will be like? Oh, it's going to be incredibly emotional. And uh, I've already prepared the celebration that we're going to be doing there, talking about Column. And uh, the two people from our youth group who are going to be presenting it, they both knew him. And uh, one of them played hockey with him. Mm. And the other one was in his class since grade one. So it's really meaningful having them there. Uh, So we'll do a celebration, and it will be in English and Swahili. And then we'll get to tour the classrooms, take lots of pictures. Then we're also going to be handing out uh, books about Column, a biography that I've written. It will be in English and Swahili. So I'm hoping they'll really get a sense of him. To have this as a focus over the last year, Nancy, Colin passed away in April of 2013. But over the last year since April of 2014, working on this, what what has this meant to you? What has this given to you? Well, they always talk about grief as being sort of a journey and a slow one, for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it has really helped give me, a, yeah, a focus, something positive, uh, feeling like there is something tangible that we are doing, and that has been really good for me. So to actually see the end result, because when we started building the raising money to build the classroom, we had the classroom, now classrooms, mm-hmm. we had no idea that we would be traveling to Kenya. That was just like a distance this trip hadn't even been conceived of. And now here I am just, you know, days away from seeing those classrooms. And how's Tristan feeling about this? Oh, he's excited. Yeah. Yeah. I think at first it was a little bit of, oh, look what mom is making me do now. (laughs) (laughs) But now he's like, okay, this is, this is going to be a a great trip. And, you know, people talk about this being a trip of a lifetime, Mm -hmm. but I have the sense that for me, this is going to be the start of, of something. I, I hope that this isn't going to be my only trip to Kenya, but to share it with Tristan this time, that's going to be really special. And he's been there working with you on a lot of these fundraisers. I've seen him out. Uh Uh-huh. That would be another (laughs) one of those, look what mom made me do now. (laughs) He's learned a lot. It's been really good for both of us. And and you must have learned so much about farmers helping farmers and and the work they do. Oh, absolutely. Over the year, I've been learning and seeing slideshows and photos. So to see the actual work in person is going to be amazing. And all the Prince Edward Islanders who support the organization. So we are going to have a blog. So hopefully you can post a link to the you blog. Got it. yeah. And uh, we'll try to post as many photos as we can. Apparently, sometimes it takes a long time. We have to be <laughs> patient. We're very North American. We have to mm-hmm. understand this is Kenya. Uh, but uh, we hope to really share the story with everybody. And we're going to, of course, check in with you when you come back. I think you know where to find me. <laughs> <laughs> it's about three desks away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nancy, have, have a great trip. Thanks so much for coming in. How did we say goodbye again? Kwahiri. Kwahiri. And then we'll say Asante. Asante. Thank you. I'm going to be saying that a lot over the next couple of weeks. <laughs> Thanks, Nancy. Thanks.